Well, good morning, everyone. Today, of course, is an important day, Remembrance Day. And joining us this morning is uh, Ted Barris. And Ted, 17 books outlining many different things in terms of history. Today is really an important day. Remembrance Day is a day of reflecting and, I guess, engaging some of the veterans at the Cenotaphs. I do. I lead a, a service every year at uh, Centennial College where I teach journalism. And we'll have uh, four or five veterans, and I'll interview them in front of the students who come from all over the world. And a lot of them don't understand where this war stuff comes from because it's all ancient history to them. And the veterans will help put it into focus for them today. And you basically make stories out of it so they can yeah. really learn it. Interesting yeah. stories. Which is what I've done with the books. Yeah, and the book that you have out right now, which is called The Great Escape, that Canadian story, it takes us back to March 24th, 1944. What happened on that day? Eighty prisoners who had been in the camp since 1942 broke out through a series of tunnels. Tom, Dick, and Harry, they were codenamed. And one of the, the tunnels, the longest, Harry, was 360 feet long. They'd gone down nine meters through concrete uh, stove foundations into the ground because the German guards at the camp, Luftwaffe guards, and remember these are officers in this camp, so they're not actually put to work. The Geneva Conventions were actually observed. So these guys in their idleness plan this escape through a tunnel. Well, uh, they worked on this thing for the better part of a year. Um, and in the movie, The Great Escape, which was 50 years ago this summer, a mm -hmm. uh, great poster showing them coming out of uh, the, in The Great Escape. Uh, it looks like a mass escape breaking through the walls. Yeah. When in fact, it was much more clandestine. It was all underground. The idea was we do this secretly. And the entire system of, of setting up the security, setting up the intelligence, stealing identities for identity cards that had to be forged, uh, working on the tunnel itself, dispersing the sand, making the Germans think that it just sort of, nothing was going on. All of this was done clandestinely. Here's an image underground uh, created by Lee Kenyon, who was a British artist Amazing. in the RAF. And, and one of that, the guy depicted is actually a Canadian a guy named Johnny Weir, whose image we'll see and, in a second. And they, they were Canadian, by the way. It, well, yeah. they were Commonwealth flyers in okay. this camp. And a third of them were Canadian. About 2,000 in the north compound of Stalag Luft III. And a third of them Canadian. So a third of what was going on was all Canadian. And if, and, and if they were hiding the sand or there's the security was going on. They were creating these documents. They actually made, took their uniforms and transformed them into civilian clothes. So once they were out, they would blend in with the uh, population of Poland, where the camp was, and make their escape. And that's why you call it a Canadian story. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, some of the men involved, Wally Floody was the uh, tunnel king. He was from Chatham, Ontario. He's sitting in the center there with a the beard. Um, he grew up uh, in, the nor in northern Ontario, actually going to the gold mines and the iron ore mines, so he knew what tunneling was all about. Uh, in the top of that picture to the right is a guy named Johnny Weir. This is Albert Wallace. He was mm. a penguin, and they, they and were penguin, called penguins yeah. because they had pants full of sand, and they go out and disperse, and they look like they were waddling. This is, he lives here in Toronto, and uh, I was with him. He's coming today to that ceremony I talked about. In the center of the picture again there, there's Wally Floody again, the Tunnel King. This is a typical barracks in Bart, Germany, in Stalag Luft One. Tony Pingeli's the guy on the left. He was in charge of taking all the identities they needed from corporate uh, Germany, uh, police Germany and military Germany and putting them into the documents that would become forged for the escapers to get away, looking like they were just average mm -hmm. citizens. So today we're going to teach our kids a little bit about uh, Remembrance Day. Where do we start? Well, I'm doing a little of that and I think a lot more teachers today are passing it along in classrooms, but parents do it too. I think when we watch movies with our kids, they watch fantasies, they watch maybe movies that have been you know, p playing fast and loose with the history. But if we're there to say, yeah, that's one er, impression of it, and give some sense of where it comes from, and say, yeah, these men were Canadians. Don't forget mm -hmm. that. When you see The Great Escape, yeah, Steve McQueen, James Garner, uh, Richard Attenborough, great actors, mm -hmm. all because they were great at the time, thrown into the film, they Americanized it and sort of made it more British, but the reality was they were Canadian. So they that's what this Canadian. is about. That's what we should teach them. And you are Canadian, my friend. I am. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for this. The Great Escape is the book. It's a Canadian story, of course. Ted Barris, you can go for more information to his website as well, tedbarris.com. Thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, on this day, Remembrance Day, it was a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a break right now from Breakfast Television.